All right, let's stick with matters power now. The cost of electricity has been on the increasing over the last year due to high fuel prices and the cost of various levies. Now, the situation is set to worsen further come April 1st should the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, IPRA, approve the new tariffs proposed by Kenya Power and Lightning Company. But just what constitutes a power bill? Jasmine Murani now takes a look at why our power bills have been on the rise. That the electricity prices in the country have become a sore wound for Kenyans is not in question. All across social media platforms, Kenyans from all walks of life have been beseeching the government and its agencies to come to their rescue. The Kenya Power and Lighting Company has especially been at the receiving end of many a complaint, and for good reason. For most Kenyans, the buck seemingly stops with KPLC. But what role does KPLC play in power pricing? What KPLC does is to collect revenue on behalf of all the sector players, starting from exploration, which is done by GDC, generation, which is done by Kenshin and the IPPs, transmission, which is done by Ketraco and, and KPLC, then distribution for KPLC and RERC. And when uh, the tariffs are formulated, they are formulated to meet the re revenue requirements for the sector. We took a sample bill from a three-bedroom household. The house has about 10 light bulbs, a television set, a fridge and freezer, a washing machine, and two instant showers. The household spent 3,000 shillings at the beginning of the month on prepaid power tokens. For this amount, they got 113.67 units of power. The token amount, which is the actual amount that went into the purchase of units, was just 1,000. 432 shillings and 28 cents. VAT was 359 and 74 cents. The fuel energy charge was 816 shillings and 14 cents. The forex charge was 219 shillings. EPRA charge was listed at 3 shillings and 14 cents. The WRA charge was 1 shilling and 21 cents. The REP charge was 71 shillings and 61 cents. The inflation adjustment charge was 96 shillings and 61 cents. Sense. Going by the token amount, only 1,432 shillings and 28 cents, or just 48%, went to the actual cost of power, while 52% of the 3,000 shillings went to meet the cost of various levies. This places the actual cost of paid for power at 12 shillings and 60 cents for each unit. The 12 shillings and 60 cents goes towards paying power generating companies for the production of electricity. Power generating companies include the Kenya Electricity Generation Company, Kengen, and other independent power producers or IPPs. The same amount will also be channeled towards meeting the cost of transmission with the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company, Ketraco, receiving the payment alongside KPLC, which distributes the power to your home. Clearly, the bulk of the payment goes towards levies. So what are these levies and why do we pay for them? VAT stands for Value Added Tax. For electricity, KRA charges a statutory levy of 16%. VAT is applied on the total cost of power, in this case, the 3,000 shillings. The forex charge, which is related to the fluctuation of hard currencies against the Kenyan shilling, caters to the expenditure related to the power sector, such as project loan repayments. The EPRA charge guarantees the independence of the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. The WRA charge is a fee passed to the Water Resources Authority for energy purchased from hydropower plants. The REP charge is remitted to REREC for implementation of the rural electrification projects. The fuel energy charge is the highest of these levies. It is the cost of the fuel that was used to generate electricity. It compensates generators who use fossil fuels such as diesel or natural gas to generate thermal power. Thermal power is essential because it helps to fill in the deficit that comes when renewable energy cannot beat the demand. This often happens at peak demand times such as 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. or due 
due in prolonged drought seasons that affect geothermal power. This power is usually on standby and steps in to cover the deficit. We have hydropower, which, which we are getting from Ethiopia, 200 megawatts. We expect that to help us increase our base load and reduce reliance on, uh, on thermal energy, which is petroleum based, and therefore we'll be able to contain that, uh, that fuel cost component. And uh, with other renewable projects which are lined up in our least cost power development plan, we expect uh, the cost of the fuel pass through to be contained. And uh, we also, the, our greatest challenge has been the, the, the level of hydrology in the Seven Falls Dam. Systemic and commercial losses further increase the cost of power for Kenyans. Systemic losses occur during transmission of power due to old infrastructure. Commercial losses emanate from billing systems and theft by both KPLC employees and customers. KPLC is allowed by the energy regulator to recoup up to 19.9% of these losses by passing this cost to the consumer. We identified the revenue collection as one of our key you know recovery strategies in the last financial year out of the increased presence uh, on the ground to collect our revenue we were able to reduce our our overdue debt by 1.6 billion and uh, you know that is money that is required to support the business and support the sector at large and therefore this is an area where we are not lending we are using all ways sending SMSs to customers, calling some of them, and where we are not able to make headway through those soft methods, we are going down to disconnect them. The cost of electricity is already extremely high. Worryingly, KPLC is seeking to increase these power prices by up to 78% if the energy sector regulator approves the new tariffs that seek to withdraw the monthly subsidy that cushions poor households. We haven't had as a country a comprehensive tariff review from 2018. Uh, the law, the Energy Act of 2019, mandates and uh, requires that we do have a tariff control period for three years. And that is why we are now embarking on this comprehensive uh, tariff review. We can talk about the last financial year. We were able to collect 157 billion. We, we are looking forward to get uh, an amount uh, slightly higher than this uh, by about uh, 15 to 20 percent. With the worsening energy situation in the country, there are a raft of measures that Kenyans can take to bring down their energy consumption. A few things here and there, like I mean, going to, in terms of lighting, uh, you can opt for energy saving lighting or even go further and opt for LED lighting. Uh, the cost is on the higher side, but I mean, the, the energy demand by those products are, you know, uh, on the lower side. Uh, appliances like refrigerators, you can go for the energy saving ones. And you can also incorporate, I mean, solar. For, for new homeowners I'm seeing it's becoming a trend. The rising cost of electricity continues to create pricing pressure for commodities here in the country. This is coming at a time when Kenyans are dealing with historically high prices of both food and fuel. Jasmine Murani for KTN News.